this month's newsletter includes the announcement of a new initiative at uh, CHR. This is only the second time in the history of a CHR uh, that our institution has taken such a step. Uh, the first time, about 15 years ago, was the initiative that made us concentrate on the older, older ovary uh, at the center in both uh, research as well as clinical care. Fifteen years ago, when we made this decision, we were motivated uh, by the hypothesis, by the thought, by the idea that uh, older women uh, were increasing in our patient population in general, uh, that uh, women above age 40 uh, represent now in the United States uh, for a good number of years the age group uh, that uh, the quickest increases in size in having children. In other words, women above age 40 are today uh, practically the only age group where pregnancies and deliveries are still rising. In all, at all other ages, uh, deliveries in the United States have been declining and a similar pattern can be seen uh, throughout uh, developed countries around the globe. Uh, recognizing then that older women uh, will become more prevalent in infertility centers, we felt that uh, it was time to concentrate our efforts uh, on this subject. And, and uh, the announcement uh, of uh, that initiative 15 years ago led uh, to CHR concentrating a big part of its financial resources uh, when it came to research, but also uh, to clinical care uh, on uh, the older ovary. We have been exceptionally successful uh, in this effort. Uh, it was uh, well-timed and uh, we believe uh, very logical because, if anything, uh, the increase in age of uh, women uh, needing fertility care uh, proceeded even at a quicker pace than, than we had anticipated. CHR is probably at the extreme. Uh, CHR has by far the oldest uh, patient population uh, reporting to CDC and ASRM, uh, but uh, we see no end to this trend as our patient population year by year uh, is quite significantly aging. In 2016, indeed, uh, our uh, patient's mean uh, age for the first time uh, passed 42. So um, we have been extremely successful by being able in parallel over those 15 years to advance our pregnancy rates in these older patients. Uh, best documented, uh, elsewhere reported uh, in this month's newsletter by the recent birth of what is likely the oldest woman ever giving birth uh, to a child with use of her own eggs after IVF. Uh, at age uh, practically 48. She was only two months short uh, of age 48 at the time we transferred her embryos. Uh, we now uh, are announcing a similar initiative in the field of reproductive immunology. Um, like 15 years ago uh, when we decided uh, to concentrate our efforts uh, on the older ovaries, we feel that the time now is ripe for this initiative. Reproductive immunology has gotten somewhat of a bad name 
over the last 20 to 25 years uh, because a lot of uh, people entered the field and made uh, pronouncements and promises that were really uh, not based on solid data. Um, CHR has uh, had a prominent position uh, in the field of reproductive immunology for many years, though we have uh, remained relatively quiet. I personally was uh, involved in uh, the formation of the American Society for Reproductive Immunology. Indeed, I was uh, the society's uh, first elected vice president. I was also the uh, founding editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Reproductive Immunology, which was founded in parallel with the uh, creation of the uh, society. And in the early days, there was a lot of enthusiasm about the field of reproductive immunology. And then, unfortunately, interests uh, in general in medicine uh, uh, dissipated about immunology, uh, but particularly in the reproductive immunology, uh, some exaggerated statements uh, from colleagues uh, rightly uh, made many uh, other colleagues in the specialty question uh, the seriousness uh, of some of the published uh, reports and especially of some of the clinical practices that started entering the field. We now feel that considering the adva advances that have been made in immunology in other areas of medicine, particularly in oncology, in organ transplantation and uh, to a large degree in basic biology and genetics, this is the time to get back into reproductive immunology. After all, um, pregnancy is a transplant situation. The fetus is 50% uh, a foreign body that is tolerated by the maternal immune system. What this means is that without the immune system reprogramming itself to tolerate that parasite called a fetus, there would be no pregnancies. That describes how important the reproductive immunology is to reproductive success. Like 15 years ago with the aging ovary, we now believe that the time is ripe uh, to start an initiative in reproductive immunology. New tools, new knowledge have made this the time to aggressively re-enter the field and we therefore are extremely pleased to announce uh, the new reproductive immunology initiative at CHR which will uh, be concentrating both on basic research as well as on clinical care of patients with reproductive uh, immunology problems in a very similar fashion uh, to how we developed uh, our knowledge and our expertise uh, about the aging ovary. We're looking forward to seeing you. If you have a reproductive immunology problem, just call us. We learn every day from our patients.